everyone, this is a free to back again for another edition of What's on Deck, your weekly look at what is new and upcoming in the world of playing cards. At first, well, let's just get on with it. We'll Kickstarter. And let's see what's on Kickstarter. Now, first of all, we got, I'm trying to minimize myself here. There we go. So you can actually see something. First of all, I got the Bicycle Codex from Elite Playing Cards. That is well-funded. Three days ago, they recently just the other day released a limited edition collector's signature edition, whatever it's called, which is only 288 being produced, I believe, and they have gilded edges and obviously pricey. Next, we have Bicycle Four Seasons from Collectible Playing Cards. It is 59% funded, six days to go. Still a potential to fund, I mean, they're getting there, um, but they do need an extra push, and I do recommend checking it out if you haven't done so already. They're nice, colorful, pretty decks, fun decks. Um, it's a nice little set. Also from Collectible Playing Cards, you get the Bicycle Starlight Solar, which is funded 19 days to go. I like to say that I sort of suggested and or predicted this one because I talked about it in my Lunar deck review. However, at this point, I don't know if there's any more potential Starlight decks they can do unless they start running through all the planets. It's not a suggestion or a prediction. That's, I mean, I don't know what else they could do. I think, personally, that's the end of the series. Unless they start changing. I, I don't even want to say anything. <laughs> Let's not make any more suggestions or predictions. Um, Diamond Playing Cards by Diamond Playing Cards is funded. Eight days to go, not a huge fan of that one myself. Green Stance playing cards from Wilbur Wonder, aka the Futurist Company, aka Classics playing cards, is funded. Finally funded, three days to go. It's a nice retro looking deck. I do recommend checking it out. I look forward to checking it out myself once it comes. Neo playing cards from Montenji Design. Is 95% funded 13 days ago. Just a matter of time before it happens. There's two versions a standard one printed by USB C that's not so limited, and a much more limited one that I think is only 500 being produced or a thousand by some other company. I don't remember. I think it's Noir Arts. I'm not 100% sure. Don't quote me on that. Oh, actually, no, it's probably WJ Printing because that's who they've worked with before on their other decks. Next, we got Implicit Playing Cards by Nathan Dharma. It is funded seven days ago. Pretty cool deck. Worth checking out. Barata Tarot Playing Cards by Sinise Chaba. 72% funded. Three days to go. Uh, still a good potential for this one to fund. They're about $1,200 away from the goal. I do recommend checking it out. It is a nice deck. Very cool. Obviously, Indian themed. It is uh, similar to the other Barata deck. It's not a full tarot deck, unfortunately. I would have been cool if it was a full tarot deck. It uh, has silver gilding on the edges. What it does have is four tarot cards instead of jokers and standard 52 cards. They also added in your more traditional tarot suits along with the standard suits to the cards. And a... Similar yet different and different colored back design from the other Barata deck. If you like the other Barata deck, I do recommend checking this one out. Let's get it funded. It's almost there. He's an awesome creator. Nice guy deserves to get this funded. Then we got Legend Hell's Ex Executioner Pointing Cards for I don't know how many times now. This is the second or third time by Daniel da Daniel Taylor the fourth. It is funded five days to go. The only way this will get funded is with a $650 goal, which is what he did. If a deck is good, it doesn't matter what the goal is, it's going to fund. If it's crap, you need a small goal, or you have no chance at help. So he's lucky, he's smart, he uses a small goal, and he funds. Why anyone finds that kind of a deck, or a comic book appealing, I don't know. And why he's basically doing the same thing he's already done, once before again i don't know but it's lackluster as well to, and against kickstarter terms to be doing the same thing 3d playing cards dinosaurs edition by the art game is 46 percent funded 10 days to go not looking too good at this rate however the last project they did which was a shark themed deck of 3d playing cards 
it just barely funded and it funded over like the last couple of days it really shot up thousands of dollars a couple thousand dollars so there's still a possibility this one gets some last minute funding and funds I said fire point cards by Emmanuel Valtiera is 21% funded 21 days to go to chances on this one not so good Emmanuel Valtiera's decks have never been you know huge funding decks but they have funded for the most part however this one is inspired by I think Game of Thrones and that's kind of a no-no so he's keeping this on the down low he's not advertising it or promoting it to avoid any issues so that is hurting the project quite a bit now, if you don't know about it you're not gonna or you don't search for it you're not gonna see it and it's, you know you're not gonna back it so definitely check it out nice artwork as usual from him pretty cool decks as you can see then we got Corvid Romantic by Megan Weber, Weaver, uh, funded, it finally funded, good for her, congrats to her, it's nine hours left on that one, not a huge fan of my, myself, I don't think it's very playable, the indexes are a bit of a turn off, it's, and uh, also the custom suits are a turn off for me. Then we got playing cards for Tiny Hands, another Trump themed deck. For the millionth time, this is getting ridiculous um, and lame. So many people trying to cash in on Donald Trump's name and the, all this publicity. It's currently 52% funded, 24 days to go. There is a possibility of funds. Uh, I will say this much. This one, they actually... Ugh, I thought I fixed this damn error. Ugh. Sorry. Uh, I will say this much. I just hate that error. I'm using Chrome. I always get that error for some reason, and I did so many things that I googled from this one website to fix that error, and it's still happening. <laughs> anyway, there's so many decks on Kickstarter scene that are, and, and other projects that are Trump related, and they're just trying to cast in on Donald Trump's name without a lot of effort. A lot of them are just copy and paste pictures. Uh, political figures and Donald Trump and putting them onto you know a deck of cards this one is actually hand illustrated everything so I will give them you know that much the artwork is pretty good on the faces the back design the tuck case the color green and orange is horrible I don't know why they chose that color how it fits with anything but it's horrible the one-way back design is horrible though it kind of fits with the one-way faces and there's the recently uh, resigns on Spicer. Bye. We won't miss you. <laughs> Maybe now he'll stop lying and start telling the truth. That would be nice. But I mean, the artwork is good. It's kind of weird. But it's well done. Nicely, you know, hand illustrated. I give him that much. However, if you got this kind of artistic ability, why the hell would you choose this for a theme? For a deck of cards? I mean, <laughs> good grief. Sorry, I'm not a Donald Trump fan. Not a lot of people are. This deck has two versions, two sizes. There's one that is the deck for tiny hands, which is, oh, I'll find it over here. It says that it's a two and a quarter by three and a quarter inch size deck, which is apparently a little bit smaller than a poker size deck. It's perfect for Donald Trump's hands. And the other one is the bigly deck, which is three and a half by five inches, so it's it's a jumbo size deck, it's or a giant size, jumbo size, whatever you want to call it. It's bigger than a standard deck of cards. I have some like that. I think they're the same size there. About twice the size of a standard poker deck. Um, so yeah, it's kind of interesting. The artwork is good, but I just think that I wish, I wish that he would have used his artistic abilities for something better than Donald Trump and company. Moving on. I mean... There's a good chance that one finds, which is fine. Next up, we have Go Cards Exercise Point Cards from Colton Suck, which is funded, well funded, 49 days to go. Lots of time in this one. I mean, it's an interesting deck. Exercise 3, and the back design is not great, but outside from that, the faces are kind of interesting. Then we got Hand Shields Point Cards from Anthony Tanute. It is 78% funded, 14 days to go. I mean, it's not bad. It is fairly standard, but it's not bad, and 
It looks like it's going to fly, so that's good. And maybe I'll get that one eventually. Enliven Playing Cards. It's Enliven Inspire Playing Cards by Brian Naratasai. It's 49% funded, 14 digital. Still a possibility this one funds. I'm not a fan. I think it's just really lackluster and lacks effort, lacks creativity. The back design is just really minimalist. I mean, at, at the very least, if that logo was bigger and filled more space, it would look better, I think. It just seems like it's really small. And then they just copy the same logo for the Ace of Spades and the Jokers. and Just not much effort. It's not enlivening me. It's not inspiring me whatsoever. Aside from inspiring me to perhaps do something better. <laughs> if I was creating something, obviously. Next up, this Apple Point Cards by Abelina Art is funded, finally. Finally, four days to go. Recommend checking it out. Let's make sure it stays funded. Uh, the blue deck is not going to unlock unless they get some massive funding over the next couple of days. However, she's planning a second project for the blue deck. Still to be printed by Legends Point Cards. She did throw out the option of printing through other companies like WJ Printing. And personally, I would prefer to see them both printed by the same company. Um... So that's what's going to happen. Next, we have City of Montreal playing cards by Magic Graffer. 1% funded, 30 days to go. That's about where he's going to be. He's not going to get a whole lot of funding with this type of project on Kickstarter, especially. It is basically a souvenir deck. And one thing I hate is when I see projects that have this kind of images, where it shows you the front and the back, the front and the back. Clearly, Images that were put onto a, a site, in this case I think it was Make Point Cards, and then they just take the images from there and throw it on a project page without actually producing a prototype or anything like that. It just looks really cheesy and lame. I don't even know if cheesy is the right word. It just it looks lame and lazy and lackluster and cheap. <laughs> Whenever I see that, it screams cheap. He's got a five thousand dollar gold Canadian, which is like who knows how much American, a lot less, that's for sure. It's basically a souvenir deck. The front of the, the, the cards, the faces, so pictures of different places in Montreal. And they're sideways because that makes a lot of sense. And the, the backs are really lackluster. It's just a flag of Quebec and you can barely even make it out because it's a sod of the actual flag and the wind and, or not even windy it looks like. Uh, you can barely make out, if you don't know what it looks like, you're going to be confused as to what it looks like, because you can't tell. Um, this, like I said, it's just a souvenir deck. Cheap looking, you know, project images, with the front and the back, the front and the back. And then the other thing is, it's the same pictures over and over. All the aces, you'll see right here, have the same images. Just like the Ace of Spades, all the twos are going to have the same thing. All the kings are going to have this. All the queens are going to have this. Jacks are going to have this. And it's like, okay, you're taking pictures in Montreal. You can find 52 or 54, I guess, with the Jokers. Different pictures to use. Or different angles, perhaps. You know, just do a little bit more. I mean, it, it just seems like it's a little bit lackluster. Anyways, it's, I don't think it's going to fun. It's just a souvenir deck. Those don't do well on Kickstarter. The goal is really high, and I don't see it happening. Nice, I mean, photography, but that's about it. Cry Playing Cards by Andrew, Andrew Levington. I almost combined his name into one word. <laughs> uh, 421 Creations is, what, is also known as. It's 7% funded, 5 days to go. Not going to happen at this rate. It's just not appealing to too many people. Unfortunately, and the goal is really high. If it was like, you know, NPC or something as opposed to USB-C, it would probably do a lot better. And also, I will say that that weird gilding that he's planning on doing, which looks like tie-dye in his pictures, which is not what the, the rainbow colors are all, is all about. It doesn't really fit the deck, that color. That special gilding adds a lot of expense to the deck which is unnecessary it's not appealing to backers and it, it just adds to the cost and makes it 
unachievable. Number of civil coin and oracle cards by Kenneth P. Langer is 7% funded five days still not going to happen, not surprising. Selling point cards by Dylan Mastrominico, 18% funded 11 days still. I don't see it happening at this rate, but anything is possible. It's not exciting at all, in my opinion. One, Theta New Z limited edition point cards by Mike Greekdom, 13% funded 22 days to go, not going to happen. And the Alpha Kappa Psi limited edition point cards, also from Mike Greekdom, is 12% funded 22 days to go. And it actually has $100 more than the other one, even though it's less percent funded, which is kind of weird. Um, They've already tried the Theta New Z deck before, failed horribly, still failing. The other one is also horrible looking, especially the back design, and this is not appealing. They're very limited appeal, these decks, they are for a sorority and a fraternity, and that is very limited appeal, and they certainly don't appeal to collectors based on the artwork, so they've got an uphill battle. And it's not going to fun at this rate. Stripey Deck Pastel Edition from Baptiste Blum is funded 11 days to go. I do recommend checking that one out. And then we got Chicken Point Cards by Will Roya. Who, this is his first project, but he has, you know, helped out with other projects. It's currently 50% funded, 21 days to go. There's a good chance this one funds because it has a very small goal. However, quite frankly, I think it's pretty horrible, and I do have some issues with it, minor issues. Like, for one, the goal is only $1,500, and he's planning to print with the USB-C. And he knows the costs and everything, but apparently he's going to self-fund whatever is needed to produce a 1,000 decks for the USB-C. And I think that's a horrible idea. If you can't get the funding for a deck like this, why waste the money? Why waste your money producing, especially something like this that has a limited appeal that's just going to sit there collecting dust and, you know, burn a hole in your wallet? If a deck is nice, people will back it, people will buy it, and it will fund, and, you know, that's great. But if it's a deck that nobody really wants, that has a limited appeal, that they have to have such a small goal to fund it, and you have to self-fund thousands of dollars yourself, it doesn't seem like it's a very financially viable decision. This is chicken playing cards. Um, and by the way, Will Roya is apparently a Las Vegas magician. So apparently he's got the money. And it says you're feather plucking insane if you don't pledge now. 100% um, custom, which is true. He also has a new website called PointingCardDex.com, which you can check out. It's got all sorts of decks available there. This is designed by Canadian artist Susan Krupp, which embarrasses me because I'm Canadian. And this is this is the best a Canadian artist could come up with for playing cards. Uh, um, this bicycle stock, aircraft and finish, or linen, as they say. The faces, the court cards are well, they're, they're kind of interesting. They're just chickens, though, uh, and a lot of texture detail in the background. And then the, the backs, and the faces I could live with, they're not horrible, they're goofy, they're weird. I like that they got the index within an egg, that's an interesting idea. And I could live with the faces, but the backs are just horrible. It just looks like a bunch of stuff copy and pasted onto the back design. The feathers around the borders and all those extra details really hurt it. If it was a little bit simpler, it would probably be better. It just There's way too much going on there, I think. And I don't even know how this is going to turn out, when it, like how it's going to look on an actual point card. That's something I wouldn't mind seeing. I also don't like that he's only going to release more images if and when the deck funds at $1,500. And then there's upgrades as well. I don't know. Also, I don't like that it's, for me... It's ten dollars for one deck on the early bird, which is still available. It's pretty bad and pretty telling when you've got fifty early birds and only twenty of them have been taken. 
and one person who's an idiot actually paid fifteen dollars for one deck instead of ten, which is dumbfounding to me. Also, the two decks, early bird, still some available. And for some reason, two people are paying extra money for two decks for some unknown idiotic reason. <laughs> early birds of six decks, still some available. Most of them are available. And only one of the 12 decks, you know, what I'm trying to say is if people aren't even backing at the early birds prices, that's usually not a good sign. <laughs> um, I also wanted to say the shipping costs really add up. For me, it's like it's ten dollars for one deck in the early bird plus ten dollars shipping. Twenty dollars for one deck is pretty pricey. Most decks on Kickstarter, it's not ten dollars additional for shipping. It, they include some of the cost within the deck price, so maybe it's twelve dollars plus five dollars shipping or whatever. So it kind of is a turn off for international people. It's twenty dollars shipping for one deck. Uh, that's pretty bad. Anyways, I just, you know, probably fun, but I'm not a fan. Ah. Anyways, then we got Mysterian, which is an all in one Oracle and card playing game by Mike Coral. 24% funded somehow, with 19 days to go. The reason I say somehow is because the whole project kind of fits the name. It's kind of a mystery. And I don't recommend backing projects that are incomplete or lacking in completion and mysterious. There's no artwork shown here, just a couple of concept artwork. As you can see, there's a concept artwork of the, the tuck case and of a dice shaker. And they actually got their logo on t-shirts. And you know, that's about it. Where is the, where is the rest of the cards? What do the cards look like? What does the back design look like? What do the aces look like? What do the tarot cards look like? Or the oracle cards? I mean, what is this deck even going to be? Is it an oracle deck? Is it a poker deck? Is it a combat mason? Is it tarot cards? I don't know. The whole thing is a mystery. I do not recommend backing projects where they have nothing to show for themselves. When you're going to launch a project, at least put in some effort, produce something, or, you know, show us some images. They don't have anything further on their Facebook page. Um, and I'm curious because he's also got a couple other yeah, projects here, paintings and whatnot. And let me just see. Well, apparently he has no fulfillment issues with that. But anyways, I just can't recommend backing that one. Intaglio playing cards from Jackson Robinson is well funded five days to go i've actually canceled my pledge i was backing it but uh, you know what he's just really turned me off <laughs> from his projects he i i posted some comments a couple days ago and he didn't bother to respond despite the fact that he did log in and did post an update i don't like that all his updates are basically video updates from youtube He's just trying to get people onto his YouTube channel so that he can make extra money from views and advertising on his channel. Um, and I, I don't think that's cool. This update's okay. He actually wrote something out, and that's what it should be. Tell us. I don't want to have to click a video to see your update. Just write the damn thing out. If you can't be bothered to write a paragraph or two for an update, then, you know, don't even bother for project. I mean, it's not that difficult to write a couple of paragraphs for an update. There's no reason to make a video and force people to watch a video on a YouTube channel. But my biggest problem with this one is that he's producing these in China. Despite the fact that his legal tender decks were produced in China and the quality was, from what I can tell, Horrible. I don't know for sure because I never got the decks myself. Not only did he 
cancel my pledge on that project just to set me up because he didn't like some of the comments I was leaving, which were valid comments because he kept delaying the project and having issues. Not only did the, the deck, not only did that project not deliver on the quality, it didn't deliver on what he was advertising, like the foil scripts within the cards to mimic money and the special you know, limited edition wooden case or whatever it was, case, metal case I guess it was, and other stuff. Now, he's going again with China printing, despite the fact that the quality was basically shit. And I will say this, he did cancel my pledge on that project, but he did promise to still send me the decks, and I never received anything as of yet, and I really don't care anymore. From, the, from what I can tell, the quality is pretty horrible. And again, I'm also just not really feeling the art on this project. There's a lot of people that seem more than willing to throw in money Throw money at him despite the fact that he's getting cheap in the production and not doing much with the artwork in some of his recent projects. And I just, I don't think I can support Zach Rollins anymore. I might pick his up in the aftermarket eventually. I don't know. We'll see. For now, pass. Moving on. And, and I don't know, I know I'm not the only, because a lot of people on the forums are not thrilled with Jackson Robinson lately. And, but there's apparently a lot of people outside the card collecting community that are more than happy to give him money. Anyways, next up we got Tropical Sunrise Playing Cards by Luis Placencia. It's 7% funded, 6 days to go. Not going to happen at this rate, it's just a lackluster deck. He hasn't even bothered, last I checked, the source of faces. Which is pretty lackluster. Zeus playing cards by GPT. 30% funded, 15 days to go. I don't think it's going to fund at this rate again. Pretty lackluster deck. It's pretty bad when it takes a year and a half to come up with clip art based on something else that wasn't even your work. <laughs> it's just a lightning bolt. It looks like they copied Flash. JD playing cards by Zach Mirza. I'm happy to say it's funded. Five days to go. I recommend checking it out. If you haven't done so already, it's Really cool Arabian style artwork. Curious Keyholes by Mark Allender is 3% funded, 4 days to go. It's not going to happen at this rate. It's doing about the same as what his previous attempt did, which is not too surprising and you know makes me wonder why he you know bothered to try this again since it already didn't do good before. And of course, on top of that, he increased the goal quite a bit. From what it was previously, which makes it even worse. As far as chances of funding are concerned, anyways. Next, Riders of the Apocalypse playing cards by Ace Collectible Cards. Funded, 15 days to go. I recommend checking it out. His artwork is always, his deck's always pretty cool. And next, we got the Zombie deck by, from Udo S. Theft, or Zombie playing cards. I, I know, I'll say that, you know, they did a Decent job with the artwork. It's you know all nicely illustrated for the most part. I mean, it could be better, but it's not horrible, and at least they put in the effort. However, it's only 8% funded, 6 days to go. It's not likely to fund. And I got another new one. This is Jane Austen Playing Cards by John Eric Ligon. Currently 27% funded, 24 days to go. Looking a little bit iffy at this rate as far as the funding chances, but there's always hope. It's a nice deck. They do have a stretch goal for a second deck. Inspired by the books, obviously. It's pretty nice, you know, Ace of Spades and artwork. The back design's simple, but it's nice. And based on needlework patterns found in Ackermans. <laughs> um, printed by USB-C. The top case is going to be nice, as you can see, and done by, let me just see, I know there's some information worth mentioning. Here you see the uncut seat. Yes, okay, the top case is, oh, that's a stretch goal. A stretch goal, I believe, is, yes, a stretch goal is at $24,000, which is not too likely at this rate. Is top cases that are going to be foil stamped and embossed by Clove Street Press, 
or the ones that do all the Dan and Dave decks, and probably the 311 decks, I'm not 100% sure, but probably the same one. And also Stretch Worlds from Metallic Inks and stuff like that. And also, I like this one, the new Hoyle. It's $60,000 Stretch Goal, that's not going to happen. I wish there was a much slower one, but this is the new Hoyle, containing easy rules for playing the games, written of in Jane Austen's novel. So that's a cool idea. Give instructions for the games that are in her novels. Stretch goals for a second deck. Unfortunately, at this way, it's not looking too good. Moving on. And also, I don't think you ever answered me on who is doing fulfillment on this. That's always a concern for me. Let me see if you answered me or not. Probably did. Um... Okay, it's working with Art of Play for Fulfillment, which is good, uh, because for me, it's always a concern when a creator decides to do fulfillment themselves, because it's a lot of work, and so many times I've had creators that I backed who did fulfillment themselves, and they gave up halfway, you know, and you don't receive the stuff. Next up, we got Stricker Forms Deck of Owls, this is by Rene Lecompte, I don't think I've sold you this one. 37% funded, 17 days to roll, still a possibility of funding. It is uh, from a, uh, the artist uh, who is, she did a deck before, it was a deck of parrots or something like that, it was a parrot themed deck, and that one funded and, and whatnot. I mean, the artwork is pretty interesting as you can see, it's all owls all the time, but I'm not seeing what the back design is, which is a little bit of a turn off for me because I would like to see what the backs look like, and I'm not seeing that here for some reason. Or anywhere. Um, oh, there we go. Poker size is 2.5 by 3.5 inches. So that other deck, the Tiny Hands deck, is a quarter of an inch narrower and shorter. <laughs> Very small difference, but it is smaller than a poker deck. Just a hair. Next up, let's move on here. We got... I looked at this one last week, it's not even a, a deck of cards, so it won't pass. Marijuana Trading Cards by Buddha. It's still 0% funded, 11 days to go. Chances of funding, pfft, not going to happen. Um, let's see what else we got. Oh, popped up again for some reason. We're getting duplicates. The Trick or Tarot. Oracle for Halloween and beyond. It. My dog Fornsdo is funded. Six days to go is what it is. It's a little bit early for Halloween themed stuff, but whatever. Another Oracle deck. I don't know anything about that one. So we'll just move on. And then we got Shapes deck by Azus. It's 1% funded. Three days to go. It's not going to happen. Uh, another one here that I noticed is this Cthulhu Tarot cards. Major Arcana cards only. There's no number cards or anything like that. It is well funded, 16 days to go, not really my cup of tea, not a huge fan of the theme, and I would prefer a deck that has everything in it, not just the major arcana. That does nothing for me. And um, that is it for Kickstarter. Move on, there's other things to mention. I noticed, by the way, Something on Alex Pandrea's. Oh, do I gotta sign in? I don't want to sign in. Uh, I don't even know what it is. There we go. Alex Pandrea. I know there's something here that he posted. Who's that chick? This right here, it's coming next week, apparently this week, it's called the Bicycle Inspire. It's a fully marked deck of cards with a secondary color marking system. Minimal bicycle deck. No more stupid wannabe rider back design. This is the bike, bicycle deck you've always wanted. I don't think the rider back design or the wannabes is stupid. And that's kind of a slap in the face to a lot of people who... Could potentially be buying this deck. It might be turned off by 
idiotic comments like that. Price of a regular bicycle deck. Don't you hate it when cards come out and they are even more than $10? So this is going to be $5 or less. If not, kind of misleading. But that's nice. The back design, from what I've seen, is very simple. It's just, uh, how do I describe it? There's another image here. I saw an image somebody posted on my on Facebook. There's another image. Um, it's just blue, and it's got a couple of logos on there, and that's it. Kind of like a Madison type deck. Uh, it's fine. It's minimalist, sort of. Obviously, standard faces. At least it's not an NLC deck. It, it's an NLC with logos. Let's put it that way. Um, a few more things to mention. Oh, Fontaine Carrots, by the way, did come out. I did pick one up for the hell of it. I'm not happy with the price, though, but at least I was able to pick one up. Uh, they were $22 plus shipping each, which is pretty ridiculous. I don't know why they jumped up $7, uh, other than he's just trying to get more money in his pocket, which is ridiculous. It's not like he's not making enough money off this, as it is. But they sold out pretty quick again, about the same amount of time as the last one, but at least I was able to get one. Uh, I think I mentioned those mechanic industry decks last week. Pretty segmented the camp cards and the drifters last week. Not a whole lot new. Uh, oh, Illusionist had a new deck, the Red Knights. I think I also mentioned that one before. There we are. Um, I should have. Maybe I didn't. Actually, I probably did. But there's this Court of the Dead card set. I don't know when it's coming out, but it looks pretty cool, and hmm, I can't think of anything else. I think that's all I've got. I could show you a couple of things that are coming up on my channel. I can get it to work. Bear with me a second. Very quickly, we'll look at some of the upcoming reviews on my channel. Excuse me. We got a vintage aviator, another vintage deck there, Fortune Brand, which is a nude deck. So a uh, viewer discuss on that one. And a casino deck, a Las Vegas souvenir deck, Firefly deck based on the sort of TV show, Horror from Ace Collectible Cards, the Eros Tarot deck from Usai, which again adult content warning there, a uh, vintage Waddington's deck. Blue Innovation from Zodi Eklund, a Vintage Arco Giant Faces deck, Prism Day and Dusk, Elephant Point Guards and Mako Point Guards from Gemini decks, Bicycle Lightning from Bokobo, Bicycle Earthworld from Earthworld, <laughs> Carter, uh, Carter Stukon 2017 which is from Art of Play, the Jimmy Fallon deck from 311, T-Sword from TCC Point Guards, and Shovel Knight from Vangamer. And Cracked Rum, second edition, Fusion on the Rising, which is from Bomb Magic. A, another vintage Waddington's, a, a Walty deck, which is from Bomb Magic. Piatnik, Doppel Dutz deck, which is an interesting European style deck. The Seasons Apothecary deck, from Seasons. Dystopia, which is from Joker and the Thief. And I think that's it. And I'll, I'll have something up today. Not so what yet. Oh, there's more yet. <laughs> it never ends. More also coming. In the near future, the Pearl Edition Tally Hole, one of the last decks on the decks you'll probably see reviewed on my channel, at least for the foreseeable future. A Disney Haunted Mansion deck, Chrome Kings, which is from uh, DeVoe. The Heron. Tarot deck, which is a vintage tarot deck, apparently vintage, a vintage 
Bridge deck from the Canadian Point Guard Company. A vintage Dunes deck, B branded. And now I think we're. That's it. The rest should be. Well, we'll find out. Oh, and the Star Trek decks. Three Star Trek decks. Those are probably coming tomorrow. And that should be it. <laughs> Plus Red Knights, which I'm anticipating this week. Sometime. Drifters. And uh, the Robber Baron Titan from Blackman Cards, and also the Camp Cards Ranger Edition from Water Play. Those are both Ranger Edition, Camp Cards, and Drifters are coming tomorrow for sure. And the review will be coming next month sometime at this rate. And that is that. Let's have a look at what's coming up on my channel. Comment, rate, subscribe, let me know what you think. I'll see you next time with more, more updates next week, obviously. See ya. Now he's gonna.